morning or good afternoon, good evening, who knows what time it is uh, with you joining us, but welcome. We're glad you're here for the nonprofit show, another episode here. Today we have Micah James with us, and I've been nerding out with Micah already. So she has passed the nerds test, um, but Micah serves as the manager of database coaching uh, for Bloomerang, and Bloomerang is one of my favorite CRM systems and, of course, is a wonderful sponsor of ours. Um, but Micah, you're here to talk to us about engaging your board with donors. So she's got a lot of great things to share with us. Julia Patrick is taking the week off. Happy Thanksgiving and restful vacation for Julia. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, and we are honored to have the continued support, investment, and trust from our amazing sponsors. So I want to give a, a shout out to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at the National University, be Generous, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and The Nonprofit Nerd. If you haven't checked these companies out, do yourself a favor, not quite yet, but in about 28 minutes is a good time <laughs> to check out these companies because their mission is your mission. So they're here to help you elevate the good work that you do in your community. And we are so grateful to have their support. They have helped us produce nearly 700 episodes. So right around Christmas Day is our 700th milestone. But you can find our previous episodes on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, Vimeo, as well as podcasts. So go ahead and listen to the nonprofit show wherever you stream your podcast as well. So pretty much if you want to find us, you can find us. No excuse. We're the new binge watch or binge listen, whatever, whatever you prefer to do. But today's episode, you're going to want to save, you're going to want to share. And in fact, I had um, a client today, Micah, that said, help, how do I get my board members involved in Giving Tuesday? And I said, listen to today's episode. <laughs> yes, let's talk about it. Let's yeah. It. So Micah James, manager in database coaching with Bloomerang. Welcome, Micah. And if you would tell us a little bit about yourself and a lot of like, there's <laughs> alphabet soup behind your name. So tell us about that. Yeah. I, first of all, thanks for uh, having me on. I'm super excited. And like you said, I could nerd out about fundraising forever. Uh, so this is a really exciting opportunity. Uh, hello everyone out there. Um, and uh, happy Thanksgiving and good luck on giving Tuesday as we uh, head into that season. Um, I, I am Micah James. I have uh, been with Bloomerang for a little over a year and a half, and I have the wonderful opportunity to manage the coaching team. And this wonderful group of humans uh, helps people elevate and maximize their Bloomerang software so they can be amazing fundraisers. And what that means for us is helping you uh, you know, really turn that CRM into the, the Ferrari it was meant to be, helping it be uh, the really amazing tool that it was meant to be, uh, taking those help articles that you read and really yeah. applying that knowledge for your particular organization. Um, me in particular, I have, uh, you know, several years of nonprofit experience, uh, lots of which is in the faith-based uh, background. And uh, most recently in human services here in Oklahoma City, where I am. And so love nonprofits and what they do, how hard they work on behalf of our communities. That alphabet soup that you see is kind of a representation of my journey in uh, nonprofit worlds. Um, and so the CCA is a certified church administrator. So that's my... Uh, uh, learning in the church world of how to oh. apply some of these strategies um, for faith-based organizations. And then CFRE is that certification of certified fundraising executive from AFP. So I, I hope that I bring some of those best practices from both of those communities to the nonprofits that we coach at Bloomerang. So oh, fantastic. Well, thank you for that. And for yeah. those watching, you'll see a lot of Texas behind her, originally from <laughs> Texas. And as she shared, she can move, but the Texas moves with her. So, so That's glad, right. so glad that you're here, Micah, and, and to share your time and, and expertise with us. So we have a lot to cover and we have a little bit of time to do it in. So let's dive deep, starting with board recruitment and setting expectations. Nerd out with us on this. Yeah. So I get a lot of questions in the organizations that I coach every day is, 
Uh, so I have board vacancies for this reason or that. How do I find the perfect person or, you know, the perfect fit for my board? Um, and really, you know, the old practices of like asking your board to ask their friends um, really is no longer best practice. We're not just trying to fill a seat to like raise a hand to vote on policy anymore. Your staff does a lot of work, but your board really should be a working supportive engine in your nonprofit. So really you should do an assessment of the skills and needs and diversity that your board represents. And then you should back up a step and make sure that you are filling those seats so that you are filling the gaps that are represented on your board. Uh, and so even when it comes to fundraising, you have to back up a step. Um, and so lots of us may or may not have set that expectation at the beginning that your board is part of the fundraising process. And right. so you really need to back up and start in the recruitment process, having those conversations that how do you feel about fundraising? How do you feel about talking to your friends and your colleagues about this organization? How do you connect with our mission? How do you find out about us? Do you have a passion? I always tell the story of, you know, we've all gone to the movies, right? We've all seen, you know, whether it's the most recent Black Panther or whatever, like the movie that gets us really excited. Yeah. If your board member can't talk with the same excitement about the nonprofit that they're about to serve on that board, if they can't say to their neighbor, like, you really should know about this nonprofit in the yeah. same way that they could recommend Black Panther, um, <laughs> and they probably shouldn't be sitting on your board. I um, love that. And I love also like, not only because they, they've might, they might've made it through, you know, the, the stanchions already and they're on the board, but now yeah. if they're on the board and they can't speak with that passion, yeah, might be time to get them off the red carpet. Well, and maybe it's just an opportunity for education. We just assume that everybody comes like you, you put them in, you like voted them in. We just assume that everybody, like once they're a board member is automatically endowed with all of the skills that board members require. You have to teach people how to be board members. Mm -hmm. um, even if they've been a board member before with another organization, that doesn't necessarily mean they know how to be a board member for your organization. What does it mean to serve with your mission and purpose? What does it mean to fundraise for your organization? How do they talk about your fundraising goals? And so you have to train them. Like, I mean, and not in a way like you're teaching them like the alphabet ABCs, but like you have to give them talking points and you have to like walk with them. You can't just be like, okay, good luck. And then when they fail, go, why did you suck at that? Uh, um, uh, and like, we have to equip people. And, yeah. and, and show them how uh, to do it or, you know, of course they're not going to do well. Yeah. I love that you say, you know, talk about it in the recruitment phase because there's so many board, well, there's so many people that are scared of asking for money, right? They're like, oh no, no, yeah. I'm not a fundraiser. And when I tell people like, I love asking for money. You know, and people are like, that is such a talent. And it's yeah. like, they're like, you're so weird. Yeah, <laughs> that too. I get that a lot as well. But at the same time, it's like, we're, we should all be ambassadors for this organization. Yes. And, and so I think, you know, taking the fear away from it, because it's really just having a conversation about Black Panther. And I love that you said that, because it's like, hey, we're just sharing the good news and the good work and the, the you know, the, the mission of this organization. So I love that, that you share that. So Giving Tuesday is right around the corner. And how can we get board members to be confident in fundraising? And I'm, I'm adding that Giving Tuesday layer in there, Micah, because it is so relevant. Had a client ask me about that this morning who yeah. might actually be watching right now. So like, yeah, hello. <laughs> what is a great way for us to engage our board members and be confident in their fundraising abilities? Well, I think it goes right back to that fear uh, statement that you just brought up. Um, I think we have to prepare them um, for the things that they're most afraid of. Um, and one of that is rejection. 
Um, I think one of the reasons that people don't participate in fundraising is because nobody likes rejection. Right. Um, nobody yeah. likes like going up to their friends and being like, I have this great thing. And they're like, no, <laughs> um, and being shut down. And so we have to prepare uh, our board members, not only in education and training and those kind of things, we have to prepare them with the just culture of accepting no, mm -hmm. like being okay with no. And a no doesn't mean never, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, going back to my whole thing about Black Panther, if you told your friend to go see Black Panther and they said, no, it's not for me, you wouldn't be offended. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be shut down. Like, yeah. cool, that movie's not for them. But for some reason, we've attached the, some different weight to the ask of fundraising, to the invitation to give and those kind of things. I think it's because it's more personal yeah. Um, and we're attached to that mission a little bit more, mm -hmm. but just because you made the invitation, you've extended it. But if they say no, that's their, uh, you know, that's their right. That's their opportunity. Like that doesn't shut down the relationship. That doesn't shut down the conversation. That doesn't even shut down the ask future, like in the future. And so we have to prepare our board members to be great fundraisers. Yeah. In the most uh, scary, frustration, frustrating moment, so that when they are successful, like they're like, "Great, awesome, let's go." Um, I think we only set them up for the positive outcome of fundraising, so that when they put it out there on Facebook and they're like, "I want to raise five hundred dollars for Giving Tuesday," and they only raise twenty five, right? Um, then they're just like, oh my gosh, I did something wrong. Something's wrong with me. Like yeah. you raised 25 and bucks. That's 25 never, more bucks than I had yesterday. Yeah, like I will say, I'll never do this again. <laughs> it's like, right. no, you have to celebrate your wins. I, I love that. One of the things that I recommend for board members before we even get them into fundraising is the stewardship piece, you know, mm -hmm. like make some calls to say, thank you. You're not asking yeah. for any money. You're simply saying, thank you for the money that you've already contributed to the organization. And that I think starts to, I don't know, grease the wheels a little mm -hmm. bit because it takes away some of the fear and it actually injects a lot of fun. And what I hear from oh. board members is like, that was amazing. I had the best conversations. I learned so much about this person. Um, and I just think that's a great, you know, like put them in the baby pool, let them, let them play there for a little bit. And then we'll take them to the, to the slide that you have to be a certain height for. A hundred percent. You know, I, I have been in more meetings that I care to admit where they've printed off the list of people that need to be called and we pass it around the room and everybody's like, do, do you want to take 10 names? Like, please stop that. Please just please stop. And what we re really need to do is back up uh, again, back up a little bit and talk about like, who are the people in your circle, again, that you just want to be excited about what you're connected to and just tell them a story about why you're serving on the board in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, start there, then move to the like, hey, do you want to come with me to the like organize the pantry day? Um, and then, you know, like it is a cultivation process. Uh, again, I think we ask board members to go from zero to a thousand miles an hour. Sometimes when we pass around the list and say, will you call this major donor? You don't know, uh, and ask them for a thousand dollars, um, and the year in giving, like we've missed six steps when we do that. Um, we really need to invite them to engage their own circle be passionate about the story they're telling and cultivate relationships. And I think that will be a hundred times more fruitful than calling cold calling a major donor on a list. <laughs> Absolutely. You had mentioned earlier, like, let's give them some talking points. Let's give them some fast facts. What are other things that we need to equip our board members with to be successful? Yeah. Um, I hate the title elevator speech just because it's overused. But yeah. I do think we need to give our board members the space to practice mm -hmm. how they talk about, you know, why they're connected to the mission and how 
they got involved in those kind of things kind of in a safe space um, because it's scary being vulnerable and, um, you know, telling someone, you know, I'm really passionate about homelessness and what it's doing in our city and, you know, how I can be a part of the solution and being able to practice that story in a group of friends or even like fellow board members before you go out there and tell it to a friend for the first time um, is really helpful. And so, you know, in addition to having the statistics and facts and things that people might ask about, you know, how many homeless people are there in our city? And, you know, how, how many dollars does it take to care for, you know, yeah. a person in that, in that situation, you know, equipping them with those kind of things in addition to providing them the space to just practice. That's great. What about LinkedIn? I know you are active on LinkedIn. Um, I always recommend, and this is so simple, Micah, but for all board members of every board to put that in their volunteer engagement piece on LinkedIn, any other like tips, tricks, or nuggets of information that we can use social media wise for our board members? Yeah, I think authenticity is the winner of the day when it comes to social media. Um, yeah, and so agreed, like highlighting it as a part of your life, um, sharing when news articles or something strikes you and not just sharing it, but sharing why it's passionate or connected with you. So, you know, there's something going around in Oklahoma this week and people are advocating for it. And so, you know, I will grab a news article, but share why it's connecting to me personally and why it's connecting to the nonprofit that I serve on. And so, People will respond to that and be engaged with that a hundred times more than the like reposting of the post from a nonprofit, right? Um, and so you will get more comments and conversation, which is really what social media is about, yeah. conversation and community, than you will about like the nonprofit posted like this newsletter link mm -hmm and yeah. you just reshared it. Um, so authenticity always wins the day. I love that. I, that's great feedback and, and think something tangible, you know, that we can do. Now, let's say the board member has taken the step. Now they're meeting with a donor, either in person, perhaps over coffee, like this image on our show shows. Um, how can a board member really listen to their donors? What do you advise on for this? Um, I'm going to tell you to be real quiet. <laughs> I yes. think sometimes we go into these meetings and we, I mean, like we've done the preparation, we've done all the things that we've talked about here today, and we are so anxious to tell you all the amazing things. And we want you to like jump in that we forget to listen, period. Yeah. Um, and so I think the best thing you can do in those situations is take a, like a folio and a notepad and take more notes um, than you say words. Um, and, you know, listen, learn about their kids, their, like yeah. where they grew up, like all of those things um, are gonna pay way more dividends in the end than telling them about like, like how they can give today or when they can participate tomorrow. Because if you remember that their first kid just went to college, or, you know, they just lost the family pet and you send them a card or like something like building relationships is going to be huge because um, you're not just there to impart something. You're there to invite them to participate in really a community because nonprofits are created to solve a problem in the community. And we're trying, honestly, to work ourselves out of a job. Yeah. And so um, you're inviting them to be a part of that solution engine. And so like, this is a community process. And so you have to know people um, to make that invitation. And so um, really getting to know them, not just as a number, not just as a donor, but like seeing the human that is sitting there in front of you is huge. Yeah. Um, and then from there, you can know better how to invite them to engage. 
That's right. I love that you mentioned, you know, ask about their family, ask about, I mean, before we even went live, you know, what did I say? Like, where, oh, where are you joining us from? Then you talked about Texas, <laughs> your kids. I learned yep. about your children. Like all of this is great intel, especially as you're cultivating donors. I mean, trust me, Mike, I'm not putting that into my donor database today, <laughs> but if you were a donor, I absolutely would, because that is institutional knowledge that then another board member could pick up the phone or have coffee and say, oh, I saw that you met with, you know, Ken on our board and this, you know, Ken had a lovely conversation. He shared with me even, you know, you've got two beautiful grandkids. How are they doing? You know, and just exactly. you start with that level of trust. You start with that level of rapport. And, you know, there's just so much insight that takes place in a very casual conversation. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And, you know, even in my job here at Bloomerang and in coaching, you know, the relationships that we build, I have people that are just like, oh, it's so good to see you again. My daughter got married and like all that, like, so, I mean, like relationships connect people, um, you know, no matter what you're doing and it just helps people like be more successful in general. Um, and so, just, you know, the more that we can be human with one another, the more um, successful we'll be, I think, at anything. But yeah. no, I agree. Another thing that I used to do, and I, I know I've shared this on the show before, but, you know, I learned that someone was really big into sailing. And so the next time that, I don't know, some something sailing came across my, you know, internet or inbox or something. And I was like, this made me think of this donor, you know, so mm -hmm. I sent them the link to the article, not an ask, nothing. It just had everything to do with, I heard you, I saw you, you're into this. This made me think of you. And I just wanted to share, you know, like those touch points and they cost yes. nothing. They cost. Yes, time. yes, exactly. Um, yeah. I have somebody in my universe that is a big, big foot fan. See a big foot sticker, stick it in the mail. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just the big thing. It, it's, yeah. you talk often about return on relationships and, you know, how that has really come into play during the pandemics, plural, mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> really looking at, you know, past the return on investment, how are we investing in relationships and where are we asking our board members to, to play in that space? Maybe our staff members, because going back to our conversation, beginning conversation, like I truly believe that we're all fundraisers. Mm -hmm. We might not want to use that F word or that term, you know, it gets a little <laughs> taboo, yeah. um, but we're really all ambassadors and we would, we should want to shout from the rooftops about the amazing Black Panther movie if we love <laughs> it so much. I, yeah. I'm not going to forget that analogy because I think that is so relatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I think authentic, uh, authenticity wins the day. And I think somebody will a hundred percent know if you are sitting down at the table, ready to be transactional or if you were sitting down at the table, ready to be relational. Um, and um, I don't know about you, but transactional interactions, I am I'm yeah. disengaged 100% faster than a relational conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, I, it's a big turnoff for me as well. <laughs> you know, like just, just having that. Um, so one of the things that I like to ask is, you know, if you, as we we're wrapping up, if you had a crystal ball, which I'm sure you do, I just assume everyone now has their own crystal <laughs> ball. Uh, what does 2023 look like for the fundraising landscape, um, nonprofit landscape? I mean, it's, it's, you can go far and wide, but what does your crystal ball tell us for next year? Yeah. Um, I mean, as I talk to lots of organizations, I think there is a little bit of, I won't say fear, but I think there is a little bit of that looking at the edge of the mountain and, and, and seeing, is there a herd of horses <laughs> coming over the mountaintop or is it just a couple? Um, I think everybody is trying to, to plan for something they don't quite understand when it comes to the economy and when it comes to, um, you know, what's happening out in, in the universe, just in general. Um, and so lots of people are, um, being more strategic, um, and having lots of 
in-depth conversations as organizations. I think COVID prompted us to think more creatively. Uh, and I think some organizations are really leaning into that while I'm seeing others really try to push themselves back into the, the boxes that we once were and their constituents are really pushing back. Um, and no so they're like, <laughs> so they're, they're really going, no, we don't want to, like, we don't want to go to a big gala event anymore. Um, so it's really going to be interesting about this, like give and take about what we learned during COVID yeah. and what, you know, what we want to keep during COVID and the uncertainty of, um, you know, what really is coming, uh, in the, you know, economic future of 2023. So I'm yeah. excited. Nonprofits always rise to the challenge. Yeah. Um, they always are right there, uh, in the midst of it all. So I'm just really excited to see what, well, what I'm excited. I'm excited to see as well. I know there's so much philanthropy out there. There's so much giving year over year after year, giving USA puts out a report and, you know, every single year it increases the mm -hmm. amount of giving increases. So there is money out there. There's yes. 1.8 million non registered nonprofits in the U S but there are so many people that want to support you. So I think, you know, the, the biggest mistake would be not to ask the mm -hmm. big mistake would be to sit on the sidelines, keep that pause button pushed. It's like, we can't, we can't do that. And, and everything that you shared with us, Micah has been phenomenal and your energy, your passion. Like I know we could nerd out for, for hours. <laughs> Days. How much more time do you have today? <laughs> I know, unfortunately not much, but we definitely want to get you back on. Bloomerang is an amazing sponsor of ours. Uh, he's been a sponsor from the very, very beginning. So each and every month, uh, we always have an amazing rock star representative from Bloomerang. So today, the amazing rock star representative is Micah James, CCACFRE, manager <laughs> of the database coaching. Check out Bloomerang, bloomerang.co, fantastic uh, system. I have used it with many of my clients and just really appreciate all that it offers. The bells and whistles, the customer service is bar none. I cannot say more good things about their customer service and that it's relational. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. So Micah, thank you for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure. Again, Julia has the week off, so I wish her well. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, which nerded out totally with Micah. We were just, <laughs> you know, right there together. So we want to give a shout out again to our amazing sponsors that allow us these amazing opportunities like you just heard here. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University. Be Generous, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, as well as the Nonprofit Nerd. Now is a good time to check out these companies. Now is a good time to Google them and see what they, um, what they offer because they are here to help you forward your mission uh, now and tomorrow and next year. So Micah, thank you. You're like my new best friend. I just, I love that you speak this language. It's, I can tell you eat, breathe, sleep it, you coach it. So thank you. Yes, it's been a pleasure. And uh, yes, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And happy Giving Tuesday. Good luck on your end of year fundraising. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you heard it here. I know you're going to want to uh, share this episode with many others. So it will be on our archive channels, which I shared earlier um, in just a mere few hours, so probably three, four hours from now. So you'll want to share that. But until then, we want to make sure that you join us again tomorrow. Tomorrow, our guest is with Be Generous, another amazing sponsor to talk about uh, their platform and other ways to engage for your end of year fundraising. But join us back here tomorrow. And until then, stay well so you can do well. Thanks, Micah.